Okay, perfect. So we have the lovely Kizzy Augustine here with me today. Um, and I'm going to hand over to Kizzy to introduce herself. But I do just first want to say that this, I already know, is going to be a fantastic conversation because Kizzy always has gems to drop. So I'm super, super excited for you guys to hear this. Um, and if you like this type of content, please do make sure that you like, comment and subscribe. And let's hand over to Kizzy. So Kizzy, introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about your legal career journey, um, who you are, what it is that you do, and then we can dive into the juicy questions. Okay, thanks, Steph. Um, so I'm Kizzy Augustine. I am an equity partner at Mishkondorea. Um, I am a defence lawyer um, specialising in health and safety and regulatory um, law, generally kind of corporate man's law to health and safety, uh, food safety, building safety, whatever safety um, issues you can think of, I tend to represent companies and individuals who have somehow um, allegedly fallen foul of regulation. So advisory it's reactive um but it's lots of fun i love that thank you and i guess to kick start us off with the questions this goes into a little bit of like how you you got to where you are today so you mentioned that you're a partner congratulations um how did you become a partner and focusing maybe on the opportunities for growth and development that a lot of kind of maybe black lawyers might want to hear a little bit more about how did you capitalize on those opportunities what opportunities should we maybe be looking out for so that we can follow that route as well if that's something that we wish to do well to be honest I, I never started out in the law wanting to be a partner that actually wasn't one of my goals I started off doing um pure crime as in criminal law, not doing crime. Um, but, you know, all I ever wanted to do was to help people who couldn't afford um, legal representation. So I went to work for a fairly large legal aid firm in East London when I qualified. And that was all I really wanted to do. And then actually, I think the benefit of opportunity came up where I was brought onto a case, which was a, a rail safety case. And I'd never really done anything sort of safety related but it allowed me to be involved in a, a pretty intense, highly complex, but very interesting case involving a director who was prosecuted for manslaughter as part of the wider corporate manslaughter um, prosecution. Really interesting, really enjoyed doing it. We managed to, to get him off the manslaughter charge, which was great, but it made me think, actually, I, I want to be in a slightly different arena. And it was at the time when there was lots of conversation about legal aid um, going to pot and criminal lawyers not really having lots of work because you know it, it just wasn't there clients couldn't afford it maybe certain firms would have to join and so on so it was in a state of flux and I thought actually if I'm going to do this maybe this is the time to do this and actually I was offered kind of partnership track then I think I had been three years four years qualified at that point and they said oh why don't you stay you know, this is going to be for you. And I just thought, well, why not take a chance? Uh, let's see what's out there. Looked out there. There actually wasn't any jobs going from the different side. So I went to prosecute um, on behalf of a local authority for a couple of years, which was highly enjoyable, um, really interesting and insightful. But I realised fairly quickly on I'm not a prosecutor. I mean, it's just not for me. So again, looked for another job still in kind of regulatory and health and safety as it was emerging. And an opportunity came up uh, to work for um, Pinsons, which was my first firm, where I grew with the practice. And it was then that I started to think, mm, I quite like this and may maybe partnership might be for me. But I moved twice after that again because an opportunity arose. It wasn't really that I was actively looking for a new job. It was the fact that by that time, I had spent so much time in the health and safety world and creating a platform for myself and what I do and how I do it, that another firm came and asked me to come and join them as a partner. So it was a lateral hire. Um, it was an opportunity that I, I couldn't really afford to miss. And it allowed me the opportunity to set up a practice from scratch as a partner doing health and safety and regulatory law the way I wanted to, to do it. Um, and then the final move as a partner was was here uh, currently to Mishcon, which again was an opportunity. They came knocking, I listened. Um, but again, the, the way they sold um, the package was the fact that they invested in me. They wanted to invest in me as a person, but also my, my practice and what I could do to set up a, a kind of health and safety practice here. Um, as a partner but as part of a bigger 
partnership. Yeah. Um, again, culture culture is important, but it would have been a, it was slightly different from my previous firm. Um, both really, really good firms, but it just I thought here would give me the opportunity to expand, work with different types of clients, but also be a bit more global in, in my approach to health and safety and regulatory compliance. So that's kind of how I've done it. And I like that. And I think there's a couple of things that I, I really took away from that. The first one being maybe the the willingness to explore things that you might not ordinarily think is for you a because you know the skills that you can grow there are, are going to be great so I'm sure for you for example being on both the defending side and then the prosecution side like you you learn a lot kind of from that um but then also just because of the, the doors that it could open up for you you never know what could happen um and then I guess the other thing that you kind of alluded to but didn't necessarily explicitly mention is your personal brand because obviously you mentioned that on a couple of different occasions so in Michigan for example yeah. they came in right um, a couple of the other places that you moved to before, they also came knocking, right? And it's, I mean, it's because they know of the caliber of the work that you do. So building up your personal brand alongside your your career, I guess, is really important for that. I think it's extremely approach. important. It's probably, you can't even undersell that, the, the importance of having a, a professional brand and a personal brand. Um, and it's never too early to start, to, to be mm -hmm. honest. I think first and foremost, as you said, you have to be excellent at your craft, right? You have to um, master whatever it is that you have as your area of expertise. I knew fairly early on that I wanted to do health and safety because no one else was doing it. No one else actually cared about it, but it became and has become over the last 20 years, a, an area of law that's ever expanding, ever growing. Mm -hmm and becoming very pertinent to um to, to uk and to global society so yeah. it was i'd love to say I, I i could horizon watch and i knew exactly where this was going to go i didn't yeah. but i had an inkling that this was going to be quite important and i wanted to master that so i i did that and i think that stands for for itself but also the personal brand it, it's kind of twofold for health and safety purposes my personal brand is i want to make health and safety a lot easier for clients so for right. businesses, for individuals, there's a lot of regulation out there, a lot of law, a lot of mm -hmm. guidance. Wading your way through that can be quite difficult. But I want to make it my job to actually go to clients and say, I can make this easier for you. I know exactly yeah. what you need to do. I know your business. I know you. It starts off with client relationship. They get to trust you. But also I make life easier for them. Yeah. Um, so for me, that's part of my personal approach to health and safety. But also... The personal approach is very much, I am me, um, yeah. and you know, take all of me um, as as you see. So you know, a lot of clients and my work colleagues know a lot about my personal life, um, yeah. not too much, but you know, enough to, to know about my children and um, my my family life and the fact that you know my work and 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 home life sometimes blur, mm -hmm. uh, but I, I bring my whole self you know yeah. to work a bit cliched but I do yeah. but you know one obvious thing was where I had a bit of a kind of struggle internal struggle was hair and right. um I remember being uh, at Pinsons and, and no one ever said anything but it was my own perhaps insecurity about my hair and what I wanted to do with it so I always thought a very acceptable style is straight back in a ponytail mm -hmm. no one can see it no one bothers about it yeah. but I started to have those th feelings about wanting to to have natural hair and um not want you know not knowing how that would be taken uh, in the professional environment I needn't have worried I mean it wasn't it wasn't an issue but it was me it yeah. was really much more about me and I felt doing the lateral moves gave me an opportunity to almost start start again from scratch yeah. these people only know me like this so yeah. there isn't anything to compare it to completely agree I, I love that that importance around being authentic I think that that's what you kind of summarize it as and I think another thing you alluded to there was the importance of relationship building so I guess alongside your personal brand communicating who you are all that kind of stuff you'd also be building those relationships along the way and I guess that leads me quite nicely to my second question which would be what role would you say kind of mentorship or coaching or sponsorship kind of has I guess in relation to career trajectory and opportunities for growth and things like that, because I'm sure those kind of relationships that you mentioned would also have, have played some kind of a role, I'm guessing, in helping you to, to get to where you are today. I mean, I wish I had, when I was coming through the ranks, I wish I had coaches, 
you know, formal mentors. I wish I had all of that. Uh, what's fortunate about this generation is that they do have lots of programs and initiatives that are very helpful, which hopefully I can I can touch on. Um, going through the earlier part of my legal career, I had to seek my own mentors. Um, and those were just done by relationship, people that I knew, people that I'd heard of. So, you know, direct line managers and, and partners within the firms that I was working with. But also yeah. I actively sought um, mentorship from the likes of, of Dame Linda Dobbs, who I didn't know at the time. But, you know, she's a black high, the first black high court judge. I thought, you know, I'd heard really good things about her from other barristers. And I just reached out to her and sent her a message. And she, she you know, it was lovely to oblige. And I, I managed to do, I think, three or four work experience periods with her. And she was amazing. I mean, she allowed me to sit with her in chambers and just talk to her about her cases and her life abroad. And all of that I found extremely helpful and gave me a little bit of direction as to what I wanted to do and whether or not I could be a black lawyer um, in the UK. Um, and how I could go about manoeuvring my way through the minefields that are, are, are clearly there. Um, but it was me having to seek mentorship. Yeah. Um, I even found sort of mentorship and, and sponsorship in the weirdest places. Um, for example, the partner who I'd initially interviewed with um, at one firm who wasn't quite sure about mm. me. Yeah. I think I don't think you mind me saying it because um, I think he was a bit concerned about my ability to deal with kind of commercial mm. clientele coming from a legal aid background. And um, after a, a short stint, you know, I, I think we'd managed to kind of sound out each other. And I'd say now, um, 20 plus years on, he's one of my biggest supporters. So not only has, be, has he been a mentor in the sense that I, I watch him, I, I think he's excellent at what he does. Um, but also, I think his support of me has been more than a mentor. It's been more than sort of adopting, adopting his way of working, his style, his uh, the, the way he delivers advice. It's not just about that. I think he has seen in me something that means he talks about me when I'm not around. He's my, you know, one of my biggest sponsors. He will yeah. be in the room and open doors for, for me, but I perhaps wasn't able to do yeah. my own. And I'm, I'll, for, I'll forever be grateful to him. But that is someone who is not someone who look like, looks like me. Um, it's a white male um, mm. who, you know, champions the work I do and the way I do it. So I do think it's really important to have mentors mm. and to to have uh, people that you can look up to who do look like you. I think that's extremely important. But I also don't want people to close themselves off from potential mm. mentors and sponsors who don't look like them because yeah. in some cases they can be your biggest champions and yeah. allies yeah completely completely agree with that um and i guess the reality of it is just that sometimes you're not going to be able to find a mentor or a coach or a sponsor who looks like you just because of the numbers so be yeah. open to, to looking outside of that especially if there are people who are willing to help you regardless right look That's for right those kind of things so completely agree with that and um, I think you mentioned at the beginning of your answer kind of touching on some of the the programs that are available now because you kind of wish you had those when you were coming up so yeah. what kind of programs would you I guess advise for upcoming black lawyers to to be getting involved in and stuff like that to help find these things so I think there's quite a lot um outgoing fact I, I did write some of them down but <laughs> for example I I am involved in formal mentorships as well as informal mentorships mm -hmm. um so for example the informal mentorships people just reach out on linkedin yeah and generally be after a speaking um slot or an event people just reach out and say oh would it be possible to speak to you informally or have chats with you and meet up happy happy to do that um even at my firm we have our own race equity committee which also has um the mentorship scheme um where they match people up not just on gender but or, or race but intersectional um issues as well i yeah. think the formal the formal routes that i have seen that have been really helpful have been um initiatives like creating pathways um rare recruitment doing mentorship programs um stephen james partnership who also had the black black lawyers matter um mentorship 
programs. So things like that, I think, have been extremely helpful for me as a mentor, learning so much from from my mentees on what's going on, uh, the cutting thrust of um, of law, but also just being able to give back um, yeah. to them the things that I I wasn't able to learn from others, but also using the benefit of my experience, I'm hoping that they'll be able to avoid some of the pitfalls that that I've come up against and to make them thrive a lot earlier and hopefully yeah. for longer um, than I will, because certainly I and others will not be here forever. So we want this next generation and, and the generations below them to be the best they can possibly be. Mm. Um, so any part that we can play in that by sharing experiences and giving tips uh, on how to progress, how to benefit from opportunities, um, where to look for those opportunities, yeah. and most importantly, how to make those relationships. I just think a lot of these, a lot of the successes that many of us have um, are based on on relationships, whether that be yeah. client, whether that be internal, external, social. A lot of this is based on, on relationship building because that's what's going to give you longevity um so that's where i think the mentorship and or maybe sponsorship will be extremely helpful for those at the junior end of, of their career completely agree with, with honestly everything that you just said um and i really like that you mentioned that you yourself do a lot of kind of mentoring for people so whether they reach out to you after speaking events and stuff like that um and i'm, I'm glad you said that because it allows me to ask another question um <laughs> go on go on <laughs> I might know the answer to this, but I want to see what you say, because like I said, you do always have really good words of wisdom. Um, to what extent do you think it's black lawyers, plural, duties to give back in terms of mentoring, in terms of coaching, in terms of supporting the next generation? And I ask this because you you tend to find the same people over and over again doing certain things right albeit probably because they genuinely actually want to I would I would like to think nobody is forcing anyone to do anything but there is also obviously that question of we, we do obviously also have jobs as well so we have nine to five we've got billable hours we need to meet we also have lives so you mentioned you've got your children you've got a family there are a whole host of other things you do as well you're Kizzy Augustin like you you have a life right it's not just work and home so carving out that time to do some of the things that you mentioned can be quite difficult. Is is that something we have to do? Where where does that kind of come from? So is it a duty? I think the best way I can answer that is to say, I feel it's my duty. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be the same for everyone, as, as we know. Not everybody's going to feel like they owe it to anybody um to pass the, the you know the, the the fruits of their knowledge uh elsewhere um also as you say people are busy yeah we're all busy though um no matter what stage of life you're in i think we're all busy i thought i was busy at two years pqe i thought i'd never have enough time to do anything now i know better but i mean there's never enough time in the day to do any of this stuff um but you make time you make time because as i say I'm not going to be here forever. And I also have a tendency not to say no. So, I mean, I I feel like it's my duty to, to be there for others. It shouldn't be that way. And to be honest with you, the reason it shouldn't be that way is because there should be more of me. There should be more people in my position at my level um, of, of, of my seniority to be able to, to share um, yeah. that responsibility. Um, but I think like others before me who felt, you know, a bit like, 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 like Linda, Linda Dobbs, she felt that she could have something to offer. So she did. Um, likewise, I've learned from that and I feel I have stuff to offer. I have information. I have support. I have networking abilities. I can facilitate um, recruitment opportunities and so on. So for me, I feel it's my duty. But it, I wouldn't ever impart that on, on anybody else. But I know there are a lot of people, particularly in, in this community, who feel the same. You yeah. know, they also feel that they they, they should and they will um, give their time. And, and they often do. They often mm -hmm. do give their time without anything being expected back. Yeah. So I, if others can do it, I can I can certainly set aside some time to help those um, who are, are, are more junior in their mm -hmm. career um, to make the career uh, you know, the legal career and, and this area of law um, as, as best as we as we can be. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. And again, completely second everything you said. And I think with that, because I'm kind of similar to you in the sense that I, I feel like it, for me, I want to give back. So that's why I do a lot of the things that I do. But I guess my question then would be, how can you make sure or what kind of tips would you give, especially to maybe junior lawyers who want to do similar? So maybe they want to give back to aspiring lawyers or something like that. How do you do it in a way that's sustainable so that you're still kind of balancing all of the other things you need to do and you're not getting burnt out? Because this this does take quite a bit of a time commitment as well. So what kind of things do you put in place to make sure that you're giving back like you want to, but you're doing it in a sustainable way? I mean, it's really difficult. I'm never going to say it's easy. It's not, particularly when you have a lot of competing pressures. As you say, you've got work deadlines, you've got billable hours, you've got a family, you might have carer responsibilities, all of the above I can tick. Um, I think you have to be quite intentional about the work that you do um, and how you do it. So, yes, I know my work, my work comes first. I mean, it, my work does come first. My work product has to come first. Um, but on the side of that, um, doesn't mean it's secondary. I do set aside time to do extracurricular things like the mentoring, like events, like you know, drafting articles for, for, for kind of de &I purposes or, um, you know, participating in arranging um, internal um, get togethers and so on. So, I mean, it, I'm just very intentional about what I do. Um, I'm better at saying no um, now to things that perhaps I can't fit in, but how it, how I can perhaps still contribute is to collaborate you know, I collaborate with with partners at other firms. We host events together. Um, and there it takes a bit of the pressure off because it isn't just me. There are yeah. others, uh, others involved. Um, I have a community that is supportive. I think it's extremely important to have. I think I've heard it called various things, but your tribe, your personal board, your pit crew, as we've talked about um, yeah. in the past. I think it's really important to have that. Um, because that's where your support will come from, where you can sound out ideas and where you can um, share um, some of the responsibilities perhaps that you feel you have um, to deliver the messaging that you want to junior lawyers. Um, but I think it's a nice way of, of getting people together. So you don't necessarily have to carve out huge amounts of time, but having WhatsApp conversations can be just as helpful. Um, having Zoom calls with people can be just as helpful so during covid it was really great to have the the tool of zoom and teams as much as we are annoyed with the, the facilities now but it, it's really useful because it meant you were reducing the amount of time you were traveling so looking for different innovative ways to reach out to people and communicate can actually save you time and help you be intentional about when when and where you're you're doing things so i, ju I just think there's you just got to find different ways to 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 carry out some of this work but yeah. don't not don't negate to do it um it's just about finding different ways of, of doing that and as i say flexibility absolutely helps covid has been great as, as much as it was a horrible experience but it's been great in terms of normalizing flexibility and mm -hmm. and helped us i think juggle the work and home life balance as well as wanting to do things um within our community and for, for the legal um the, the, the lawyers amongst us <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And I, I really like that. I guess it's just really important to be flexible, right? Um, like you said, you, you put your work product first, but around that, there are hopefully still some more hours in the day <laughs> that you can... I wish there were 36 hours in a day, but I even would. then, I reckon okay. we still say it's, it's not enough time. Yeah. So always keep time for yourself. I mean, it's, it's so easy to say, but as much as you want to do all this stuff and you will find time to do it, I think you cannot be the best version of yourself to then help others if you don't set aside time for yourself. So, for example, I, I have an hour, I have at least an hour a week um, to myself where I go off and I, I, I play steel pan. I'm in a group. Um, we go off on a Saturday morning. And that's my hour. No kids, yeah. partner, nothing. It's just for me to mm -hmm. unwind and, and enjoy myself. Um, yeah. Like what I used to teach, uh, dance, I mean, I was a dance teacher for a while on the side so I mean again it's time for myself it's a way of me unwinding and being away from uh everything else when yeah. I come back to it I'm fresh I'm, I'm ready ready to go others think about kind of well-being and mindfulness and you know all of that sort of stuff but it's what works for you really yeah 
Yeah, I completely agree with that. And I guess part of that just means you need to take some time to figure out what works for you because not everybody wants to, you know, sit down and put on a face mask, right? Nothing wrong with doing that. I do that on I'm doing that too. <laughs> but if that's not your way to recharge, then yeah. you need to think about, you know, realistically what's actually going to make you feel rested right. and feel like you can go again. So can completely agree with that. And mm-hmm. I think generally, if I happen to ask any lawyer, so this is even kind of moving away from like black aspiring lawyers anybody their first question they're probably going to ask me is oh your hours they must be really long what's your work-life balance like right and it's a question that we get all the time so I want to ask you because you're at quite a a senior position now so it's something you've been doing for many many years you've probably had your peaks and troughs you probably started off in one place ended up in another place what has your work-life balance looked like over the years and what advice would you give to those of us who are just starting out I could be very honest about this (laughs) And and I will be very honest about it I, 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 to be honest, I, I don't think work-life balance exists for me. Um, I, I, and I don't see it as that. I don't really look at life as as a balance because mm-hmm. I don't necessarily feel I ever have that exact equilibrium. But I see this as as work-life integration. And as long as I can make things work together, sometimes you know I'll do more than others. It's integration for me. So I look at you know, what do I need to do? I I, I plan probably to the nth degree. So yeah. always, but I do plan because my intention is there. So not only do I have things planned um, on calendars, but mm-hmm. I have a written book that I, I set aside kind of for the month. And then I have a separate um, notebook for each day as to what mm-hmm. my tasks are going to be for the day. And I tick, I tick those off. Um, yeah. So that's kind of how in my head it works. I also use my inbox as well with red flags, but that's not always a, a foolproof solution. But I just keep a note of what I need to do when. So that's how I kind of organize my my work. Yeah. Um, home, life, home life does suffer sometimes, um, but I do set aside time to spend with my kids. So, for example, uh, an absolute non, uh, not something that I will not compromise is dropping my my well my son now my my yeah. 13 year old is is way too old to to even want to have me drop her off at school but um I take my son to school every morning yeah and that means I start work slightly later but that is absolutely something that I I've always done and I want to continue yeah. doing um in the evening I I do try and spend um time when it when I'm at home yeah. with both of them to yeah. check in and make sure they're okay whether it's to do homework whether it's just to watch something on tv but just spending some time with them because i realized that you know i'll never get that time back they'll never get that time back so yeah. when i'm there i want to be present with them the way i work and it doesn't necessarily work for everybody else is i work in the evenings so once the kids are in bed then i'll do a, a few hours in the evening but it's just because because that works for me my yeah. day is generally spent doing extra things meetings yeah events uh you know as i said client relationship or, or even social relationship building activities so it's not always work during the work day but that's just how i work yeah. and that's how i make everything fit in for me but i as i said i don't think it's a balance mm-hmm. i think it's it's an integration point for me and as long as i can make everything fit and and work then i'm happy um, yeah. as long as i'm carving out a little bit of time for myself as well mm-hmm. And I love that. And I think ultimately, kind of like you said, we do have to be realistic. I think when you're just starting out, it's maybe fresh out of university or something like that. You you come with the idea of work-life balance because maybe you just haven't worked before. So you just don't really understand how things integrate together with your life. But you're right. It is a bit more just about integrating and making sure that you can do everything that needs to be done at the time that it needs to be done, which yeah. just doesn't mean that sometimes you're going to give 80 to one thing, 20 to another. But if that's what needs to be done at that time, that's okay it's yeah. and so. if it doesn't work if, if, if it doesn't work it doesn't work tomorrow's exactly. another day and you start again right yeah. and again, be intentional about it and set yourself yeah. some, some goals but you know you mustn't beat yourself up because you haven't managed to do absolutely everything you'd set out to do because it's a goal it's a bit like this is a health and safety um analogy but um lots of businesses aspire to target zero or mm. um you know, zero harm because they don't want people yeah. to be harmed hurt employees or not but it's a goal you can't always achieve that because things do happen so the next day you set your soul stall out again and 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 you start again with your objective so that's kind of how i look at at life 
Cool. So thank you so much for that, Kizzy. And before before we end, like this, assuming people have zoned out, which obviously we hope they haven't, but assuming they have, what is the one thing that you would want to leave people with? What's the one thing you want people to remember? I think there there's probably a few things um I'd like people to to remember. Um, first of all, um know who you are. Know who you are, be confident in who you are. Um, I think I've heard lots of people in the past say you are enough, you are where you are meant to be because you're meant to be there. Um, so be comfortable with that and be comfortable with who you are. Um, I think the first, first and foremost, though, it's very much about learn your craft. Yeah, whatever it is that you want to specialize in, whatever it is you are doing, even if you change that halfway through, I think you need to be known for being excellent at what you do. Yeah, this is what we call black excellence, right? So um, you want to be excellent at what you do. That's got to be your starting point. From that comes being known for having a personal and professional brand, building your relationships. Um, you know, all of that stems from who you are and how you do it. Yeah. I'd also want to encourage people to look to, to, to be open to opportunity and to not be afraid of change. Mm. You know, lateral, lateral moves, lateral hires can be quite difficult and daunting. You're going into an environment which is different and scary and you don't know the culture and people don't know you. But I think that is scary, but for good reasons, because maybe it's a challenge for you and maybe that's going to make you shine. Um, so don't be afraid of change. Worst that can happen is it doesn't work out and you go somewhere else. And, and, and that's that. I'd also say celebrate your difference. So I, I never want people to think of themselves being different as, as a negative. Yeah. Um, I know that I'm different to a lot of people in my workplace and outside, um, but also I can be quite similar in a lot of ways, but I celebrate and I really herald the differences I have because that's what makes me memorable. Yeah. Um, and that's what makes me stand out from, from others who are in a kind of dispute resolution um, yeah. environment. Um, I am different and I like that. And I want them to like that too. Yeah. So I, I don't shy away from from talking about my differences and celebrating that at every given opportunity that I can. I think that's what makes hopefully a great lawyer, but what makes me me. Yeah. And I love that. And I just I couldn't even summarize it better myself. So I'm not even gonna try. <laughs> but honestly, because <laughs> thank you so, so much for for taking the time out, first of all, to do this. Um, I know we've spoken a lot about being intentional with time and things like that. So I really do appreciate you taking the time out to, to come and have this conversation because it is really important. You do have amazing things to say. And I'm I'm really glad that you've come and shared and imparted those those kind of words of wisdom because so many people I know can benefit from it. And if for nothing, I have benefited from it. So I'm going to say- And I have benefited too. <laughs> and to be honest, I just hope people, I mean, like, no one has all the answers, right? But I just hope people will listen to this and it will spark a conversation or conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because no one will be able to tell you exactly how you're going to feel um, exactly. when you enter the world of work or, or you think about promotions, but it certainly can help with starting and continuing those conversations, those very important conversations that need to be had. For sure. For sure. Amazing. Thank you so much. And if you did like this type of content, please do make sure that you like, comment and subscribe. I would also throw in, reach out to Kizzy if you want to chat to her because she's Why one of mean? that will respond. She will help you out when she has the time to. Don't it may take me a while sometimes, but I will respond, I promise. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So do make the most of that and, and try and reach out to Kizzy too.